So, Comp Response Season t Series 2 of Key Ships begins with the Craft Zeppelin. Yes, that particular aircraft carrier. And, well, I'm going to start off because I would like to expand this out, but that means I'm going to have to finish it. I'm going to have to answer some of the top comments to begin with. So, let's answer them. Ralph Yuniger. I just had a thought. According to the internet, a very reliable source of information mm, on German equipment, I know. Actually, to be honest, the Weboos do keep it fairly accurate. Obsessively so. Um, yeah, there's always some. The BF-109T uh, has a range of about 560 miles with a drop tank. That's a common radius of something like 130 miles using the 431 ratio that gives the Air 4F Wildcat a radius of 175. And the Wildcat wasn't exactly known for its range. Most of Graf Zeppelin's strikes would have to be unescorted unless she gets in real close. I would say with a 560 miles with drop tank, you are probably looking at a strike range the way the Germans would run it of 220 to 240 giving them time over target and time to get back but yes it's 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 not particularly a great range realistically it's not bad and again if we use the um the range of the wildcat well, it soon works out as being slightly more. Now, the Wildcat's not exactly known for its range. Nope. Most of Grass Zeppelin strikes would have to be unescorted unless you get in real close. Pretty much. Also, the loiter time for the cat would be annoying, and that combined with the catapults means I suspect Grass Zeppelin would have been more problems with it, uh, would have had even more problems with tempo operations. Yeah, basically, it's one of those scenarios where, um, Things are going to get problematic. Things are going to get problematic very quickly. CDFA free, double free 88. Like burn, only somehow worse. Well, there's always going to be someone who's going to make it worse. Let's be honest, there have been recently some movies which would suggest that the main target of people is to try and make something worse than previous movies. Now. 404. Of us. 404. No, I don't think there's a reason why. I think it's more to do with gameplay development at the time. I'm presuming this is to do with the question about ultra animal dreadnoughts and why they don't have uh, don't have aircraft carriers. They'd have to develop aircraft and they would have to take off and land on aircraft carriers. I would imagine that it would have heaps of bugs and stuff. And for what? And remember, the world map still has a has an edge. So if they would develop aircraft carriers, it would be a DLC or a sequel. I'm guessing so. I, I think it will do at some point, because I'd love to see them work on aircraft carriers, but I think it will be a sequel when it comes in. Come on, tag. Uh, come on, Donna Keyboard. <laughs> uh, commented on, key on a keyboard. But German officers had monocles, so they could sneak aboard and strangle their, strangulate their British opponents. Yes, but some of our ships carried Gurkhas, in which case good luck to anyone streaking as thinking aboard. Many of them carried Royal Marines, and quite a few of them carried Killix. And let's be honest, Killix... Yeah, you don't sneak aboard a ship with a Killix aboard it. They'll be looking out for you. And if you make a mess of a chief's deck, oh, good luck to you. Captain Banjo, you, you start off with excluding yourself immediately by saying, in a sane world. In a sane world, they would have taken some oiler or cargo ship, put a flat top on it in the mid-30s and used for training. They would have cancelled Bismarck and doubled down on turpits. They could use this hull shape as the next starting point for their first actual combat cable carrier and had a couple in the water before 1940. Finally, it's some yet to be determined time after that, They'd have a purpose design that incorporates learnings of others. Or even better, just beaten their Aryan race pride into the corner and taken a design from the Japanese. I'm not sure why you're cancelling Bismarck and doubling down on Tirpitz. That's presuming that Tirpitz is a lot better than Bismarck. Uh, 
That's an assumption. That is an assumption. In World of Warships, Richard Cutts, in World of Warships, boarding parties could still be a real thing. They could be, and it'd be quite fun if they were. Uh, Tricky Vic BB71. In my head, I have this idea that what if Gra Gra of Seven Salties in Baltic in 1942? Then in 44, goes into Antic, encounters Atrus Renown and some tribals in North Sea and gets blown up. If she's going into the Atlantic in 1944, she's going to encounter far scarier things than even Atrus Renown. Could well include some tribals, but probably far scarier things than even Atrus Renown. Ryan Taylor. Something that has grown to be one of my dearest wishes for a lot of, of history is Graf Zeppelin being completed, sorted Blendick, and then somehow captured by the Royal Navy. The evaluation reports afterwards are some of the funniest things I've written. Uh, it would be like things are like, this is an extremely innovative engineering system, which has a lot of intriguing possibilities. However, fundamentally, it gets in the way of operating this system and this vessel as an effective carrier, as it just is too complicated. Mrs. EZ, and this will be the last video on this uncommissioned ship ever, until Sunday. I keep hoping I won't have to do any more. My theory is now with these two videos, my bits are covered. I'm crossing physics anyway. I would like to say that since then, since I did the Graf Zeppelin video, and I would like to say since this one, I'm just checking the, the full details of how many videos I've done, which have got Graf Zeppelin in the title. Uh, there have been six done in total. The most recent was on the 7th of May. Likely British response. And... And that was a Kier Ship Series 2 Ship 1 bonus. So that was a bonus to this video. And there are comments on that one. And then this is, of course, Graf Zeppelin Q Ship Series 2. Uh, series 2 Ship 1, which was the 1st of May. And that had 105 comments on it. So I'm, I'm slowly working through the comments. Okay, John Fisher. Thanks for your information, Dr. Clark. You should by now know that no amount of intelligent, rational, and accurate and provable information will prevent a true and rabid werewolf from screaming about the perfection of all World War II German ship designs. Everything bad about them is a result of Allied propaganda and deliberate misinformation. The major source of information is probably the very, very inaccurate and biased World of Warships game. I can only imagine people getting into naval history by try playing that and finding out just how wrong it is. I hope they continue to learn their true history and treat the game as they should, as a first-person shooter game. World of Warships is a very good game, but it's kind of like going to movies for accurate history. It's making sacrifices for gameplay. If you made it accurate to history, it would not be as fun a gameplay. Hans Berger. This reminds me of an interview with the head of tech innovation for Centcom, where she recounted that a vendor brought out a prototype demonstrator for testing on a boat. She jokingly asked if it was waterproof, and then realized the contractor didn't think to waterproof a system for an autonomous naval craft. Goes to show that even in the 21st century, it's easy to get caught up in a technical wonders and solutions for edge case problems while forgetting about basic operational necessities. <sighs> I would love to say that was not a thing which I was experienced. Um, Gwit pick? Gwit picked? Not sure. Not sure what the journey needs to carry for Oven Prestige. Norway, as you said, may be commerce raiding, but as a commerce raider, she just adds one to the Iron's li list of ships to kill. Germany is a land power, so why spend resources on sea one projector and power? The Atlantic belongs to the UK and USA once they've got on top of the US uh, U boat threat. Well, from fair on here. <sighs> Dr. Here made a wonderful point in the past about diversifying the threat you pose to an enemy. If Britain, uh, British never had a reason to have any concern about German service fleet, I suspect the Italians would have been even less happy, not to mention just how much easier the tonnage war would be if it was blatantly obvious the British only had to worry about U-boats. Pretty much it's this. If you multiply the potential threats, the British have to prepare for a carrier to come out all the time. The carrier needs to come out once. The British have to prepare for surface ships to carry out or come out all, uh, at any time. The surface ships only need to come out once. 
And as Nick Vaughan said, carry can provide air cover, but it can also provide scouting, which can really affect things. If we consider Operation Berlin, okay, I've done a video about this recently. Lutchens, and the problem he has with keep coming across carriers, well, keep coming across convoys, which have battleships with them. Theoretically, if he has a carrier with him that's working efficiently and appropriately with scout aircraft, he could find the convoys which don't have a battleship with them. He could find those convoys and hoover up those convoys. And uh, grip pick. The Graf Zeppelin's launch process sounds delightfully inefficient. It's going to work. It's going to work, but it's going to take a long time to work. Richard Guts, believing that combat in World of Warships is accurate is like believing Monty Python and the Holy Grail is a documentary. Again, it's a game. It's a good game. It's a nice game. But again, it's kind of like Ultimate Andronauts. I love that game. I love it. But you might have noticed that whenever I'm doing the design of ships on there and trying to make them historically accurate, I basically rebuild them from whatever they're trying to suggest. Or just don't let them suggest it in the beginning. And the ships we end up fighting in the campaign, where the the AI is coming, uh, the sort of the programs coming off it, are nothing like ships would be in reality. For starters, it's as if they've had no concept of logistics and the reality of carrying. Oh yes, we're carrying two dozen different gun types. Yay! Plop, plop. What's that? That's the logistics officers. Jumping overboard. <laughs> they saw the guns. They're just trying to swim to shore now. But we're in the middle of Atlantic. I know. We, we we kept them aboard under lock and key till we got here so we could, you know, try and retain them. But they're, they're trying to swim for home. <laughs> As for the engineers who have to maintain them, it would be a case of... Do you really hate me? Hmm... Uh, Dibby Connor. Our end of the Royal Air Force wouldn't have allowed her to even leave port in one piece. And if she had, uh, she had, she would have been sunk within a fortnight. Churchill would have taken a grenade and a rowboat and sunk it while shaking his fist at the Hun, but a Hun. Yes, probably would have done. Something. Right. Temper, temper, renown. Incomprehensible, uh, incomprehensible angry British noises. Hmm. Potentially. Certainly potentially. Geo guy, HMS Audacity was a merchant conversion from a captured German ship. Italy's carrier was converted to liners in it. Germany had some large passenger liners available. They did, but then that would be accepting that something was going to be less than perfect solution. Again, this is a problem you have consistently in a lot of German production and design. They do not like to accept things being less than perfect solutions. Alana, Alana Sarah. I've noticed a lot of this comes down to people just looking at the raw numbers, i.e. this many guns, this caliber, this many inches of arm protection, without considering things like radar, gun layout, actual gun quality of guns, act. the technical aspects matter as much or more as the raw stats. Yes. And also, I would say with the Graf Zeppelin, there's also the fact of, can you use the guns? Where are they positioned on the hull? Is it likely to be covered in, deluged in water on a regular basis, making use of the guns impossible? Ralph Nieger, I have to hand it to the Germans. I doubt they could have designed a worse cruiser carrier if they had tried. Every aspect of this carrier works against every other aspect. Her catapult design means that she can only launch half her planes, which completely prevents any meaningful massing of air power. Even an escort, an escort carrier could probably put up enough fighters to defend itself. A counterpunch would only need one bomb hit anywhere on the forward 50% of the ship to knock out the catapult system, probably permanently given how complex it is. A wildcat dropping as 100 pound glorified hand grenades could do it. It wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if a shock damage on torpedoes near misses or bomb hits in other parts of the ship disrupted the operations as well. She has no durability in a surface fight either. The hangar is both enclosed, perfect for trapping gasoline vapors, and unarmored, perfect for getting penetrated by high-speed projectiles filled with explosives. Any hit to the forward part of the ship is going to smash those catapults, along with those containers of nice preheated engine oil. She'd light up like a fireworks display on the 4th of July, or a bonfire on bonfire night. 
The casemates and the casemated guns need to, uh, needed to keep the flight deck clear are too low down to be used in weather that would stop the planes from flying, so there's no guarantee you can actually fire them. They also only allow half the guns to fire a target at best. This thing has more 6-inch guns than a Brooklyn class, but the broadside of a Leander class. Given how poor the firing arcs of the casemates can be, I wouldn't be surprised if only the forward guns could engage a ship off her bow, at which point an Arafusa class could flat out outgun her. A tribal class destroyer probably arguably outguns her. Like, if I was to design a carrier while keeping a gunslinger spread alive, I'd probably just mash USS Lexington and HMS Illustrious together. An armoured box hang with four and a half inches sides and a three inch flight deck, carrying around 40 aircraft designed for rolling takeoffs to resist cruiser fire and launch a meaningful airstrike. They're uh, then paired out of eight, in, uh, eight eight inch guns in four twin turrets fore and after the island so you can engage surface ships in a more standoff distance where the armour can do its job, along with 16 four inch guns and eight twin uh, deck. Uh, uh, eight twin between deck turrets at the corners of the flight deck, able to mostly fire 360 degrees to make things interesting for any aircraft or the old destroyer for, or frigate that manages to get close. Who knows, maybe the armoured flight deck won't be effect, uh, affected by the muzzle blast. Then for good measure, install a couple launchers for the aerial torpedoes on each broadside, maybe fore and aft as well, because if they're making a gun fighting carry, then why not? If nothing else, she could at least start spitting torpedoes at, uh, back at anything chasing her. That should be doable in 33,000 tons. She might even be able to survive a gun battle. <sighs> Potentially. Her catapults comprise ability to launch aircraft. Her aircraft comprise ability to fight surface ships, and her fighting surface ships comprises the continued function of a catapults. Why Germany? Just why? Uh, it gets worse when you start to look at some of the line out of things like radio rooms and facilities of where she has. The rooms for running her her, her entire her ship and her air group, etc. The entire thing needs to be reorganised. And look, the problem you, you get to is people go, "Well, they're, they're, you're just saying that because of you're British and you're going to the British system." No, the British have one system, the Americans have one system, the Japanese have one system. All three systems are different. All three systems have their own logic, which makes sense, and they make sense fitting within their way of operating aircraft. The problem is, just, a, just this is just a small problem, just a, just a tiny, tiny issue, really, a tiny issue. The problem is, the German system and layout of these things doesn't have that going for it. Now, I am saying this based on the designs I've most recently seen, and. They were translated into English for me, and they, they could be in, they could be pro, uh, problems with translation. So, please note this could be entirely wrong, but I'm fairly sure it's not because I trust the person who did the translation, and I trust the designs they've looked at. It's you're going to have people running backwards and forwards. Instead of me logic of them going here, 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 and out to the aircraft. They are going here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then up and out to the aircraft. And it's a case of... Way to make things more difficult than you to be. Kind of cold. German light carrier that was simple and workable for a novice carrier power would not, uh, no doubt be caught up in Luftwaffe cruise marine rivalries. Goering's Empire building would have placed the carrier program on his control and the escorts would have been under fleet control with separate com control communication systems during operations. Carrier new boat production would consume yard space to the point Panzer Freeze for floats would be pressured into escort treaties. Once the carriers were out and out at sea, they'd likely be vulnerable to merchant cruisers and sloops due to lack of production. I can see where that's coming from, but honestly... This is the fact they do build this. They do build the Graf Zeppelin. If we, well, no, it's it's just skipping through all the ones I'm recording. Uh, this is all the slides from series two. I'm just skipping through them because I'm I'm recording today all of the uh, series two comment response videos. And um, yeah, they did they build the Graf Zeppelin. They they could have built. A light carrier. They could have got done that, but again, making a simple, a simple solution to a to a problem is just not what the Germans are about at this point. Uh, Michael Cooch, 
Rid of six-inch guns on the grass, and I agree with you that putting six-inch guns to carry is a bad idea. But looking at it through the German eyes, it does, if you squint half, kind of make sense. An RN carry can re be reasonably certain that it will have a cruiser riding shotgun. So if the bad guys turn up, they'll tackle them while you run away. The Kriegsmarine, however, doesn't have enough cruisers to guarantee this, so without being able to depend on something riding shotgun, the Graf Seven needs to carry the shotgun herself. I said, not an approach I agree with, but one with some degree of sense to it. Okay, I can agree with that idea, but then there's where you place them. And frankly, as we've just been over in a, the earlier comment, um, the six-inch casemated guns, from, as Ralph has put it so well, don't exactly make sense. Carmen Gasberg. Besides the, the, that close, the, the four-inch heavy AA return file will ruin your day, dear Graph. Sure, Mac. Um, are you in good uh, insinuating that the British fudged the figures in some way? It's quite likely to fudge the figures in any way that you can prove. Yes, but that's because the British have a habit of writing the rules. If you look at the entire joy of the treaties, the amount of times the British are involved in the writing of the rules, to the extent that I don't even think sometimes the Americans realise this with Washington. Yes, the Americans get the British to be involved in Washington, and that's... Well, that's a storied thing, and that's silly you can argue in many ways. But the very writing of standard displacement and the very writing of some of the regulations really helps the British because it fits with the way the British build ships already and operate ships already. Um, don't worry, Jurgo. Now Paul from Chicago, uh, that's Geo Guy's done a, a comment there. Just saying, don't worry. Paul from Chicago. Uh, re aircraft carriers in games. The problem similar, uh, probably simulated aircraft carrier basically turns almost any game into an MP issue. There are times that Harpoon struggles with carrier battle groups. They're usually plural. When you have thousands of data points going at once, each interacting with each other, even the most simple program with the most simple graphics will struggle. I agree with that. Uh, that's for Chicago. And then Andrew Farmer. I'll see your grass open and raise you the hybrid Atlantic Cruiser. Why hurt me? Okay. I've managed to go this long without mentioning or discussing that on this channel. I have managed to avoid the Atlantic Cruiser. No one needs to see it. It's kind of like... The Blackburn Blackburn. I know it's coming. I know I'm doing key aircraft as the next, as part of uh, next year. That is alongside key ships is also going to be key aircraft series. So they're going to be sort of into you know playing with each other and coming out at various points and then um, longer term uh, uh, in 2025 I plan to introduce key people and then in 2020. Six, I plan to introduce key weapon systems and those sort of things as the short as the short videos for um, Fridays, basically. As it seems to be quite popular and people enjoy them and I enjoy doing them. The idea is that I try and make a video which is less than 40 minutes. Okay, if you're all laughing now, I do realise that I have an actual problem with making videos less than 40 minutes. But I'm trying. I'm trying. Just can't help it. I'm used to thinking in terms of two hour to three hour and four hour lectures. Uh, Von Axel, something like the SSS Hanover, otherwise known as HMS Audacity, is probably best as a low cost learning experience. Then once the blockade goes up, and all merchant vessels are basically saying, but take a 10,000 ton, uh, 10,000 gross register ton liner for an up expanded second try. A, definitely a good idea. All of these are good ideas. Thomas, uh, uh, Thomas Walski, I'm glad you made, uh, made uh, you decided to make the video. I'm also on need a simple way to explain to people how bad the ship was, so I highly appreciate it. Such an awful idea, and even more terrible execution. In a way, all those resources spent on building such warships have suddenly cling to the idea Kriegsmarine can win a naval war from 1942, shorten the war considering. Too bad it would be in bad taste to war Donitz after the war, uh, uh, bad taste to war Donitz after war's over. He was one of those Axis commanders who were acting so badly as if working for the Allies. In his case, for almost half the war. Yeah. They run. 
this is going to be good. On my command, unleash reach an argument. Of course she was a failure. As the level of human development was not advanced enough to comprehend the beauty of German engineering, Mother Russia's research bureau knew that New Day could blame the Pit Viper's Vandal Horde, lack of scientific Marxism, for them advising not to use that system. So saving their lives and families' current accommodation location. <laughs> I have... Yeah, it just gets worse. Captain Nemo, always felt this ship was mildly pointless, mainly because Germans never seemed like they will have enough destroyers to escort it. As launching system for an aircraft, I felt it was more than good enough and even acceptable. If it was a horrible choice, but acceptable. The reason for this is the Germans had experience using the 30s. Uh, what experience are you referring to uh, with using the system? If you're talking about the various land tests, that's really not the same thing. And only started in 1938, the system using using moving seaplanes on cruise actors is different again, although similar principles. So I'm not sure what experience is The Lufthansa. Operated a South Atlantic group with a pneumatic catapults of a ship in the middle of nowhere, where the seaplanes were, uh, were crane loaded and tossed off on to a vessel using tricism. The mail ships, I did wonder, but that's not the same as it. That's launching and covering individual aircraft, usually in decent weather. That's with a lot of maintenance versus use, rather than really naval. And it's something the Germans had real world experience, which is where I was going. Sure, they should have figured that something better out, but they knew how the mail ships and the systems work. It's just. And this is not made, this is not anything about you, Captain Nemo, etc., or anything to you, but it's just. I knew about that system, but to me, that's such a poor starting point for a naval system that I presumed it I'd almost sort of blocked out the link. <laughs> it's a case of that, that just doesn't make s that's just such a slow turnaround if you look at the pressures what are requirements for operating a mail ship and a, a mail service versus what's the requirements for operating an aircraft carrier it's different that appears to be the comments are repeating themselves again I'm, I'm not sure why but the comments have seemed to be double over I, I, correct me if I'm wrong but they appear to have doubled <laughs> Alright, Calvin, Dr. C has finally cracked. It came close, but I managed to survive. It came close. Sean the Dean, I wish she'd been completely used. I think I'd have finished fitting her out more like an independence carrier, a light carrier, which were rushed wartime builds. They were still effective, leaving any systems already installed that didn't get in the way. It wouldn't have changed anything in the long term, but might have provided an interesting data point in European car operation world or two. If nothing else, it might have provided an interesting battle the RN could have bragged about after they sank it. They missed out on sinking the IJM's fleet carriers after a near thing in the Indian Ocean. Mm hmm. True, that one. Although, there again, it could have turned into a very interesting battle where the British launch a night strike, manage to take out something, and then the Japanese try and take out, the return the effect, try and return the favour the next day. In a Scottish Russian accent, there are things on this ship that react poorly to bullets. Hmm. As an engineer, this ship makes me happy. As someone who has seen how much wear and tear, good conditions in, good in combat impart on equipment, this system makes me want to cry in a corner. <laughs> so I'm always telling people, go, look, if you look at this, this engineering on paper, it looks like really cool systems. If you're trying to use it in actual conditions, it's going to make you cry. Gabriel Mathis, what's your opinion on Senate's the last light carrier for Germany and how might that compare to similar? It wouldn't have been that light, but like other citizens, if you're adopting the same aircraft management system, you'll run into the same infrastructure limitations which can tail the graphs, but as a spay. Uh, Gene Allen, the Germans had some big fat ocean liners that had interesting statistics, but couldn't overcome design distortions for conversion of the carriers. Were there any smaller liners that could have been converted into reasonable CVLs that would fit the German naval doctrine? Potentially, but not without a lot of work and material for those same yards which couldn't finish in anything else during the war. Um, or inside, there wasn't anything small enough to become a CVL without also being too slow to be a CVL, at least without an extensive installation of new machinery. Certainly CVEs, but Germany did not seem to have a need for those. Uh, Gentlemen, in my neck of the woods... Michigan, we had a couple of paddle boat aircraft carriers, but I guess that type of carrier wouldn't be much for the Germans either. But it's perfectly fine for shark-free waters. Now, on the, f the argument, Ryan, that there's, they're too slow, there were two. 
and I cannot remember the names, but there were two which were both capable of 27, 28 knots that I think would fit the criteria. So they're not fast, fast carriers, but they're not that bad. 27, 28 knots is okay. How about a video on Led Zeppelin? Technically, I have a black and white dog. I used to have a black one, the poodle for a fluffy research assistant before the current fluffy research assistant. He would have loved YouTube. He was an absolute camera hound. Yes, Mozart was an absolute camera hound. <laughs> he couldn't be a camera cat. Well, he couldn't know because he was a dog, but they're very cool. All right, Nemo. All those faults are irrelevant. An Earl Pro David Graf Zeppelin 1941 would have brought havoc to the British Commerce Seamers. Not so much for real effectors, but for the perceived presidential danger. The old R class would not be enough to protect a convoy anymore. They themselves would be easy prey of an air attack. <laughs> you potentially yes, but it depends on the air attack. Um <laughs> Then, so, uh, the only thing that could stop it would be one or two British carriers on the Atlantic, but that's really too few. In fact, Graf Zeppelin, just in being threat covered uh, to intercept the stripping lines, and then would probably I mean no British carriers in the Mediterranean or anywhere else in the North Atlantic for foreseeable future. I've covered all that from memory. The threat of Graf Zeppelin would be far more of an issue than the reality. But I would also point out, Nemo, that I'm not sure where you're getting the British carrier numbers for in 1941. Okay, if... They have it in 1941. The thing about it, I would also add, is if the if the Germans are building an aircraft carrier and it's actually looking like it's going to come into service in 1940, 1941, then quite possibly the Royal Navy wins the argument. With, they already divided off from capital ships and carriers in their argument with, uh, with Churchill. They were making, trying to make a case to continue carrier construction, even though he wanted to pause capital and carrier construction. He ends up pausing both, but he almost doesn't pause cap carriers. If the Germans have a viable carrier coming into service, a viable carrier, please don't know what I'm saying, viable carrier here. I think, an, or a carrier actually going to come into service, they might well win the argument on the carriers. They might not get, they, the, the implacables might still be paused, but the illustrious class won't be. In which case, you have all those four in service. And if the illustrious class got in service when they could do, and let's be honest, with the pause, that adds on quite a while. But as it is, they're all commissioned in, well, May 1940, November 1940, May 1941, and October 1941. So the thing is, Having them ready for 1941, early 1941, is not a stretch of the imagination. Considering they were ordered all in 1937, they'd all been laid down in 1937. Uh, three, had been uh, three were launched before World War II began. Uh, that's just 5th of April 1939, for middle 17th of August 1939. Victorious, I think, just after war begins, 14th September 1939? <sighs> I don't know why, but for some reason I had a blank of whether it was the 1st or 11th of September. Uh, but it was the 1st of September that it World War II began. And, well, less than two weeks later, Victorious launches. And Indomitable doesn't launch until 26 March 1940. But if you don't have a pause, those are going to be coming into service a lot earlier. And... Well, you also have, of course... HMS Unicorn, and you have the Implacables. Now, the Implacables... Implacable is laid down in March 1939, and Indefatigable is laid down in November 1939. If they aren't paused, and they'll continue construction, and it, it, Unicorn isn't as well, again, I don't see them necessarily... They're launched in the historic timeline in 1942, in December 1942. I think they could have been most likely have been launched in late 1940 if they're not paused. In which case they could have been probably coming into service at the end of 1941. And Unicorn's about the same. So the thing is, if the Germans have a carrier coming through, the odds are the British don't pause the carrier construction. Do they still lose Courageous and Glorious? 
Potentially. Do they treat them differently though? Potentially. So potentially, I would say, I think probably Courageous still gets lost because that's complete abandon, uh, com uh, still completely being silly. But Glorious might not because the British might be being more protective of their assets if they know the Germans have something coming through. <laughs> Josh White, British can pull in fast fleet carriers from other areas temporarily until they've hunted it down and sunk it. Germans only had one thing. Once you sort that problem, once it's solved. Would be super annoying in a moment though. Uh, nobody wants, uh, but the people trying to design a carrier in that time must have been chasing around every time a new aircraft design came out. Not only the size, but also the complexity and the number of people needed to service the plane. If it's going to be turned around quickly, they were known that some fighters especially would be broken, but which bit and half often? I want it to remain unfinished. It's not perfect. They were burn up. Lack of a German carrier doctrine and received and trained crews and its systems and other ships operating with her would have reduced her common around a, a single carrier. The island would have found their best available hammer to wrecker. The thing is, as I've said before, the Battle Atlantic is as much about perception and image as it is about actual fighting abilities and having a carrier. And the threat that that can cause, that's the problem. Now, if Said it before and I'll sell again. A point I know you agree with. If you have to use your gun armament on a carrier against service target, then someone messed up big time, pure and simple. Um, good pick. Unless your HMS fit available, it can't matter if I fancy having a pop. After all, it's HMS Bar and Violent Va War Spite are wreaking havoc with the Italian Navy. Why shouldn't you join in? But point taken. Great pick. Not uh, Because some poor, poor, unfortunate Italian sailor just might have gone the chance to shoot back, that's why. Yes, which is why Cunningham is pretty much signalling himself. Get out of line. Also, no point about did Formidable have to use her gun armament on the service target. They, as in the gunnery crews, chose to do so. Uh, do so. Small but vital distinction, that one. Uh, good pick. Indeed, hence the use of the phrase, fancy having a pop. I was attempting to light humour. To really stretch range, I can imagine a formidable gunnery officer hopping up and down saying, They're in range! They're in range! We have to go! We've got to have a go with guns! Yeah. Not the only one. I would agree with both Lafferty Bull on that one. Uh... Dr. Monkey, a.k.a. Dan Freeman. The answer to the question, I would like to consider two different Graf Zeppelins. One, Graf Zeppelin being around, ready around January 1940, worked up enough that it is included in the Norwegian campaign. This will soon discover the problems with the uh, with the F-109's undercarriage and will have them break at a rate that will make the Seafire seem rugged and dependable. How the most likely role I can see for the Graf Zeppelin is joining Nazi and Schanholz as part of the more northerly cover force, for the weather. but the weather in early 1940 was notoriously awful. While they're at sea, so unlikely to be any flying, uh, be any flying before the attacks. Then it is then a question of what happens when now three German ships encounter an angry RM battlecruiser. The possibility of a German carrier would hopefully mean the RN would be taking better care of their own carriers and the home fleet more likely to have one or more available. With all the BF 109s likely broken within five minutes, I can see skewers dominating the JU 87s in a horrendous pseudo fighter, fighter fight. Doing the mass in my head. Yeah, I, I think the JU 87 might be one of the few aircraft that, in a dogfight, the skewer could actually out dogfight. Conclusion one, as Graf Zeppelin is more likely to help the RN overall, forcing them to step up their carrier game early. True, and also there's a potentially that Renown focuses her fire on the aircraft carrier, rather than Scharnhorst and Neisenau, which could, let's be honest, if you get a similar number of hits on the Zeppelin as you did on Scharnhorst and Neisenau, you probably scratch one flat top. And Renown gets to claim a kill. <sighs> to Graf Zeppelin on pause after Taranto and or Operation Berlin and Operation Rheinberg so they come into service in late 1941 early 1942 this would have the option of navalizing the Focke Wolf 190 rather than the BF 109 for their fighter but by now the Royal Navy has a better force to counter the Germans so I foresee another lonely and boring assistance in Norway until someone manages to sink her put her out of her misery the idea will probably be to wait for the French to rejoin the war in great numbers and then send Bern on a suicide run to, ra run to ram Graf Zeppelin so that both sink and we are saved from both horrors 
kind of okay. As I mentioned to your second remarks, she may have been a fjord based airfield for Terps Protection or Convoy Annoyance. But yes, I have to completely agree with you. In reality, she is a floating pin out of her Royal Navy to whack repeatedly till the goodness, all the goodies come out. Um. Well, because the ME109T had extended wind, extended wind span and spoilers to improve the landing characteristics. It's more suitable than the C5 due to this, as the speed difference between approach to speed to stall speed was higher. Over a thousand arrested, uh, arrested test landings were conducted. The ME109 had a wider track undercarriage than the Wildcat. The ground looping problem had, that caused the undercarriage breakages occurred in the three point sitting attitude, since the aircraft would be hooked by the then, uh, by the then the problem would not, uh, not manifest. The issue was solved incidentally by 1944, identified two years earlier, by extending the Telyuk on the ME 109K4 and ME 109G10, and some G14s and G6 yokes are interchangeable. The sitting altitude changed from 13.5 degrees to 12 degrees due to proper circulation. One wing stalled ahead of the other, causing landing and ground loop issues. The problem was actually worse than the Corsair and solved with longer yoke in the same way, as well as stall strips and struck absorbers. Because the ME109 tank was based on the ME109E7, a new version based on the ME109G was started called the ME155. This was transferred to Bomb Voss and became the VV155. All true, but please note that we're talking about 1940. And then they were talking about that. And as you've pointed out, most of the corrections are done by 1944. Ergo, the, as, as, and actually quite a lot of the test landings and development stuff is done actually later on during the war. So, yeah, I would say the ME1019 as it existed in 1940 would probably make the CFAR look good. I can see where you're coming from, but the thing is, that's all afterwards. That's again repeated the question. Why does it keep repeating the comments? Um, you uh, Mark Charles. Okay. Mark Chark. Uh, Ch March. Uh, March. Uh, March. Six one zero one. You'd think that the cruiser would pay close attention to the practical experience of Japanese allies, but I guess not. I couldn't help but think of a scene from Tora Tora where Admiral Kimmel is reviewing the air search recommendation presented to him. It looks fine on paper, but it's not a paper fleet out there. Okay, Williams. Uh, most of what is disparagingly written about the Grass Zeppelin is nonsense by supercilious, lazy, and ignorant folk historians who haven't studied the matter. Oh, cute. This is going well. Uh, the Japanese had no suitable practical experience, nor did the US in the types of operations the Germans would need to do in closed water and narrow channels while being attacked by onrushing tour destroyers. Why are you in a scenario where you're dealing with onrushing tour destroyers? I, just taking this the wrong way. Why is your aircraft carrier in that situation? I presume you're talking about the Baltic. That's lovely. But you have your own destroyers, your own torpedo boats, your own cruisers, your own capital ships. All of those should be far further forward than the aircraft carrier. So why is your carrier dealing with those? The Royal Navy was uh, no, real, no better, really. IJ and experience of the expanse of the Pacific and Ocean, um, named after its relatively peaceful nature compared to the Atlantic, was the same as the USN. The, I the IJN have a lot of experience in the terms of carrier operations and dealing with them inshore against potential threats inshore. They spend quite a lot of the war with China using their carriers. Um, one, the compressed air trolley system was able to launch aircraft without the aircraft t a carrier turning to win, as an USN RN IGN carrier said to do. A German aircraft carrier would need to operate in enclosed waters of Baltic. Navigator get past narrows around Denmark, through North Sea, or out to the English Channel, and there was no space or time to head into wind. It was also slow and prone to braking, but yes, carry on. Two, it, it's you are making a perfectly valid point. You want to operate in the Baltic, but you can run into the wind in the Baltic, or you just don't use it in the Baltic. Use land-based air cover, which would be more sensible. Because as you're worried about onrushing destroyers in a confined space, again, how they're getting through the rest of your fleet, I'm not sure, but th this is your words. Two, a German aircraft carrier would like to be subject to onrushing destroyers and be able to defend. Where are these onrushing destroyers coming from? Is it the Royal Navy with its tribal destroyers? In which case, have you taken your aircraft carrier up the fjord into Narvik? In which case, again, that's not really the smart thing to do. Why is your carrier going up the fjord and Justin Ford into, uh, going up the fjords into Narvik? 
If not, if you're talking about the Baltic, who are these on-running destroyers coming from? And they're coming from the Russians? In which case, again, surely you have your own destroyers there. Where are these destroyers coming from? Are you fixate? Have you been reading about German accounts of the experience at Narvik and you're just fixated on it? The aircraft carrier would need, uh, you know, that. The aircraft carrier would need some armor so it could absorb some damage without having to abandon its mission. Okay, that's fine. The, the Royal Navy go the same thing for the armor carriers. Four, the compressed air trolley system would be able to launch a strike package of 24 ME109T and JU87 torpedo and dive bombs with its, ch with, with its charge of air. That's lovely, but if I remember correctly, it's carrying roughly 42 aircraft. Now, launching 24 sounds great, then it's run out of its or, or, uh, supplies, but that's its aircraft gone, and it's also quite a slow launching system. It's not, fa it's not as fast as the other systems, which means the aircraft that are up there waiting for the aircraft to launch, because you've only got two catapults, so you can only launch two at a time, the uh, aircraft up there are burning fuel waiting for you to launch. Which is why speed of launch matters. The Fiesler F16, uh, FI-167 biplane torpedo and dive bombs had such low flying speeds, they could launch without a compressed air trolley catapult. They could. They could also be intercepted by a swordfish. This was the German Navy's first carrier, so there was some learning involved. Yes, and if it's my first of anything, I tend to go and look at how other people are doing it and go, hmm, what's good? German mail aircraft of four engines and a 4,000 pound weight had been launched by compressed air. It's uh, such complexity such as trolley return, but let's not pretend that returning trolley is an impossibly difficult task. I never said it was. I said it's a complicated task, and unfortunately, under combat conditions, any of those things can go wrong. You're adding in a lot more issues which can be broken, a lot more issues, things which can have fault, and a lot more things which can be disrupted by the effect of only fire. Especially if for some reason you keep engaging on rushing destroyers. Where are these on rush Why are you not clearing out these on rushing destroyers with your cruisers and your own destroyers and your own torpedo boats? Why are you facing on rushing destroyers with your carrier? It's just amazing to me. And the German mail aircraft, yes, I already talked about the German mail aircraft system in response to other comments. That's a perfectly valid system for the mail aircraft. But speed of launch is not a criteria. Volume of launch is not a criteria for mail aircraft. It's delivery of your mail that's the criteria. Dr. Monkey, Soviets, upon looking at the trophy of the grass up in 945, Comrade, I may just be, uh, may be just a peasant turned day 34 driver, but even I know this is not something we want. And Williams. Modern Russian carrier operations actually do not seem to be far worse uh, than the issues of the Graf Zeppelin. The Germans simply couldn't spare the resources to complete the Graf Zeppelin. Nothing really wrong with the design. They would have been able to launch full weight ME109 and J U D S M without turning into wind. Yes, they'd have taken forever. They'd have been burning off fuel, which would have reduced range. Uh, we've already talked about the ME109T's range earlier. It's This is not a good si system, because you're going to be limited in range of your strike to the air to the, the range the amount of fuel left on the first aircraft that launched unless you're going to just have them flying off and they've got to catch each other in which case the Royal Navy would be very happy with you because it'd be just a string of aircraft coming in a couple of minutes apart pretty much by the time they reach the uh, reach the target if they'll reach the target it's just look I am not saying these are bad ideas. I'm just saying cumulatively it doesn't work for producing an efficient carrier. Alex, your argument for the poor said German aviation forgets the German elephant in the room. The fat clown in charge of Luftwaffe and his disagreement with the Navy. Goring, being a good Nazi, had the air of the not funny Chaplin impersonator and declared he had control over everything that flew for the whole curse this curse of carrier development. I didn't really get into the aviation part of German aviation other than saying that they had some interesting air group ideas as I was focusing on naval part. And that's one of the other interesting things I find, you know. The amount of people who tell me the aircraft were going to be great and I'm sitting there going, well, the aircraft are going to be limited by the carrier they're launching from. Nice area for one. Uh, a few comments from you. Graf Zeppelin should not have been given to go ahead. I, they needed a carrier. They just needed to actually think it through. <sighs> Thank you.
Nice turn. If I remember correctly, unless it's a myth, someone misheard the number of guns and instead of getting eight six inch guns, got 16 instead. There is certainly a myth about that. About number of guns they wanted to and then they couldn't correct it. And I, I, I have a feeling there are some details in that myth. And why do I get the feeling the octagonal lift was a bad idea? It, as Twin Trucks today says, strange lift, unless it was more, more, more than one aircraft, it wasn't. It, the octagonal lift, if you look at some of the designs, and there is, helpfully, there is a design somewhere here. Let me show you some of the options. They were producing around being able to lift one aircraft. One aircraft. Drew Batching. The Cursed Zeppelin. The 152mm guns on Zeppelin would have been more useful than light cruiser force. Williams. The Graf Zeppelin had to fight his way past Denmark Straits. Who is in the Denmark Straits? The Germans control the Denmark Straits. They have conquered Denmark and Norway. Who are these destroyers sitting in the Denmark Straits? Who are they? The 150mm guns were very powerful and had a great range and would have stopped the destroyer dead. Destroyers trying to attack Bismarck at night were driven back by these guns, which produced a 140 foot high splash. No, they didn't. I know, I wrote the book about the destroyers which were doing the attacks at night. At no point were they bothered by the German splashes. In fact, they kept going completely wild. They were going in, launching torpedoes and diving off, and the Germans claimed, we've driven away. But no, that was the British tactics of a box formation, so they didn't drive them away. They were just carrying on their doctrine because you didn't want to have more than one destroyer coming in at a time because you wanted to properly silhouette and fire your torpedoes. And that's the bridge how they bridge did it during the night. That was their night action methodology. Rather than doing a mass attack, they wanted to keep up the occult torpedo attacks for hours all night. If they sunk it, great. If they didn't, they didn't care. They were to basically tormenting them. But no, at no point did the 150mm guns play any part in driving them away or anything like that. The, the Germans claim all sorts of things about them, but the British accounts are... The Germans were firing. We're not quite sure what they're firing at. Um, they weren't firing at us. Do mention, those guns would have been better than light cruiser. Uh, running with guns. A 120mm weapon was under development at the end of war for German destroyers, but it wasn't really ready at the time of the Graf Zeppelin. This was Luftwaffe a flat gun. Navy Webs has some info on it. They did try to change the design and replace it with 105mm guns, but it proved impractical. Mm -hmm. Gra uh, great pick. The Graf Zeppelin was meant to be an aircraft carrier. If you're sticking 150mm 6 inch guns on fi uh, to fight or surface attacks, then you're basically saying it's all gone horribly wrong at the design stage. Think about it is she a carrier or a light cruiser? If your design expects her to perform by, uh, as both, then resign. Winpix, open up a Google map of Germany. Maps are good. Check out where Kiel is and then maybe Wilhelm's Island. Now, imagine a German aircraft carrier getting out in the open ocean or even past the English Channel. Interception by destroyers is almost inevitable. It's not like the British or Japanese or US carriers. So now you're talking about interception by British destroyers in the English Channel? You're taking an aircraft carrier through the English Channel. You're taking the Graf Zeppelin. I know the Channel Dash goes well in one direction. I don't think I'd try it in the other direction. So that's not what you're building it for. And by the time you are actually close to playing, you have control of Norway. So you go up the coast of Norway. You have control of Denmark. You have the Denmark Straits. You have the Kiel Canal. Why are you doing this? Our entire, the idea that Graf Zeppelin would have been able to stop several of the intercepting destroyers with a casement guns prior to the destroyers getting mission kill hits on the uh, uh, Graf Zeppelin is foolish at best. Graf Zeppelin was the worst possible carrier design for what the German Navy actually needed. Looking at those guns and their arcs of fire, I have to say I'm more agreeing with Orion. I think she has them to try and deter things. And because of the lack of destroyers and escorts they have. But I don't think it's for fighting in narrow channels. Because if you are honestly, and you keep referring to this, fighting in narrow channels with a, against a destroyer, in those same narrow waters, you're going to be within torpedo range. And torpedoes tend to trump six-inch guns. Because yes, you sink destroyer, but don't take this the wrong way. It's not being mean and rude about crews, but the Royal Navy and many other navies will sacrifice a destroyer or two to take out an enemy aircraft carrier. In the scheme of things, the Royal Navy's building a lot of destroyers. At several points, they're building more than the entire German destroyer fleet in a year. In months, in fact. Um, it's, well, once you include things like 
the hunt class escort destroyers and all the the war emergency fleet destroyers and all the other vessels they're building they're, they're building a lot of destroyers if they lose two to take out the Graf Zeppelin in a battle, they would not care. So again, I refer back to you, why is your dis aircraft carrier fighting in Narrows? Especially Narrows you control as Germany. Now you can argue, well, they were fitting it before they, you know, had control of those Narrows. Yes. Yes. But that certain point, if that's a real criteria you have, you're presuming you're not going to control Denmark or Norway. And you're going to be getting your carry out to sea. If I'm Denmark and I want to stop your carry getting out of sea, because I'm in a scenario where I'm stopping you, why again do I have destroyers in narrow channels when I can just stick a minefield there? Why am I, you know, it's, it's very, and I, that could be a radio controlled minefield from the shore. You know, with electrics, with me setting them off and going boom, boom, boom underneath you. So it doesn't matter if I have merchant ships or things going through, they won't be affected. They're just the moment you cross the line, boom, remote control station ashore sets it off. There's the scenario you're coming up with, the justification, doesn't work. There are justifications for having guns in terms of self-defense. On rushing destroyers in narrow confined spaces is not it. It's a scenario where if you're doing that, you look like an idiot. Because things have got terribly wrong. If your justification for that is how many things have gone wrong beforehand and you thought before you deploy in the carry in that situation, and why are you deploying the carry in that situation? Because you're basically sending people on sending people on a suicide mission. Casemate guns fell out of favour at the end of the 1910s, and the only reason Warspite Malaya, Barham and Revenge still had them was because they could not be modernised in time. Barham Malaya, or did not get the full modernisation as planned, Warspite, or was supposed to have been retired. Revenge class. Hmm. Don't go on. Hmm, sure that's not how you spell key. <laughs> Sim Richards. She wouldn't have lasted a week. The Iron would have hunted her down with no mercy. Nee, pretty much. Uh, Sage 2308. When I consider a proposed motor type running the graph center a Zeppelin, I want to just want my wax crayons all <laughs> Uh, Marcus Rangoon, Grass Zeppelin was the perfect example of if you want to try, uh, try to reinvent the wheel, you end up with a square log of wood. Over engineering, ki engineering kills any design. Over automate, uh, over automation kills its purpose as you create a complexity that is prone to malfunctions and need a specialized personnel to repair. Example, 1960s VW Beetle van or Citroen 2CV. You could fix with a paperclip, a hammer, and a nylon stocking. 2000s, a light breaks in a car and you need to disassemble half the front to get the light bulb. How many cars are now breaking down or starting because of a faulty sensor or a computer crashing? Nothing one can do to fix it until a mechanic with the right skills and laptop fix it. 20 trucks now. Used to stock you in a French car. Nuisance metric. Put some more. Did you... William, did you copy and paste this? Seriously, I'm thinking you're copying and pasting this because you keep producing the same thing. The One, the compressed air trolley system was able to launch aircraft without the aircraft turning into wind as the USN... Ron, uh, the aircraft carrier turning into wind as the USN RN Nigerian carriers had to do. They didn't always turn into wind. Usually they just went fast enough. Uh, the ones that had to turn into wind were the slower carriers. So, yeah. A German aircraft carrier would need to operate in enclosed waters of Baltics, navigate past narrows around Denmark, through North Sea or out through the English Channel. Why are you going to that? Uh, through the English Channel. And there was no space or time to, to head into the wind. Again, don't take this the wrong way, but you've got 42 aircraft. If you're relying on your aircraft carrier solo to take you through the English Channel and you have not conquered France and have not conquered Britain, or in a nice way, have not already cowed the British Air Force, you're in trouble. Your 42 aircraft aren't doing anything, so the English Channel should not be in your anywhere in your reasoning. Now, leaving that to one side, going through the narrows of Denmark, Again, why do you launch the aircraft there? Why don't you launch the aircraft before you go through the narrows? They're not that massive and that long. Surely you'd let your cap off and then go through. You should wouldn't, wouldn't in the middle of the narrows go, you know what, we're just passing Copenhagen. Launch aircraft now! Because that's a bit late. The shore batteries have probably engaged you. It's just... 
your reasoning on that one, I can see where you're coming from, but it's such terrible logic. It's, yeah, yeah. The compressed air, lo lo air trolley system will be able to launch a, tro a, a, a strike package of 24ME109T and JU87 torpedo and dive bombs with its cha uh, charge of air. That's great. It's launched 24. Illustrious class can launch its full air group with its catapults. So could Ark Royal. So could all the American carriers. That's why they had them. So, yeah, you'd be, you'll be dealing with, well, 24 or 32, air, uh, 42 aircraft. Um, yeah. The fees of the 5167 five, bi biplanes, torpedo and dive bombs had such low flying speeds, they could launch without compressed air trolley catapult. The swordfish could also launch without things. That's one of the reasons why it's kept around, why it's so great on escort carriers. This is nothing... Later in the war, when you're loading up with even more resources, you're using rockets to assist in takeoff, but... Yeah. There are lots of biplanes around which can launch. Well. Uh, this was Germany's first aircraft carrier, so they were some learning experiences. Cannonball carriers and IGN flying off uh, the deck carriers were unlikely to have worked in the real world of North Atlantic and the Baltic. Okay. Don't take this the wrong way, um, Williams, but... Sometimes you shoot yourself on the foot there because catabar carriers un and flying off deck carriers are unlikely to work in the real world of North Atlantic and Baltic. Well, in the North Atlantic, they work quite well. The Royal Navy, US Navy, used them for quite a lot of time. Um, still using them to this day. In fact, in the case of the US Navy and the French Navy as well, the Royal Navy has Stovall carriers, but they, 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 they also work quite well in the North Atlantic. Um, as for the Baltic... As for the Baltic, two questions I'd be asked is what reason are you using an aircraft carrier for in the Baltic that you wouldn't be able to use land-based aircraft for? And two, and this is, the, this is a really important one, if your carrier is operating the Baltic, the Baltic is wide enough for them to be moving around. Okay, it's not as wide as the Mediterranean, but it's wide enough you can maneuver around. Especially when you consider the size of this carrier. It can operate. All right, and then turning three four three, no, nothing that what what couldn't be said better served by better performing actually existing versions of the same planes and a nice stamp for the flat stamped dirt field. Why are there even engineers working on this? Yeah, pretty much for the Baltic. Chris Master, I'm celebrating a comment storm since I don't drink otherwise I would have drunk an entire bottle already. Uh, Christmas carriers were caught uh, out by service ships a few times, but most often were chased by them yet never caught, especially if the carriers know it's a threat to be taken seriously. Can't recall any US carrier being caught out. CVEs were, but that's a very stupid comment. To be stretched out, ponderous steel spheres involved. involved. Atreus Glorious was sunk by, as PHA determined, Glorious was sunk by battleships, uh, by battleship Sharnhorst and Eisenhower. Yes, it was, because the British went against Doctrine and Sharnhorst were, uh, Glorious was A, didn't have uh, the didn't have air search going on, had no um, overflight going, watch flight, and wasn't in the company of a cruiser or another, gr another group. In which case, if she had been in the company of a cruiser, she'd have probably had the aircraft airborne because most of the cruisers wandering around had senior officers aboard who would have gone, why is there not an aircraft over my head? So Glorious is sunk. It's a curious case of British doctrine says do this. They are not doing it. And there are various defences put out for why they weren't doing it and what they were all sorts of doing, things going on, all sorts of mysterious, well, we think they were doing this operation and this plan, which we have no writings of, we have no documentations of. Because, you know, the Royal Navy likes to launch operations which involve very expensive pieces of equipment without putting down, uh, putting down a lot of reports. <sighs> Alternatively, you have something strange going on. Question Master Law. The USN fleet... Air, fleet Air really didn't have night operations during the entire war. Spread exceptional efforts with terrible results. Mariners, Turkish ship, most aircraft lost due to sunset. I was shocked and surprised, favorably, how effective Royal Navy carrier night ops were. 
Age of Fallen, I believe Enterprise was able to do Night Ops towards the end of the war, but she is Enterprise, so you know some uh, how real life plot armors like New Zealand Warspite. Doctor knows far more meals, but it seems a lot of British advantage comes from an early adaptation of good night fighting doctrine. The British start training and planning for night striking, realizing if no one else can do it, then it's something in their favor early on, and just continue to compound on it with technology, and the swordfish, despite being a biplane, has a lot of interesting tech in it along with the carriers to help with navigation. PHA8787, Enterprise Independent Saratoga would like to talk to you. Mmm, yeah, Enterprise definitely, Independence, oh, uh, at a certain point in war in Saratoga uh, as well. It's later on, you're talking about the Americans develop night operations as it goes throughout the war. They don't start off with initially that things. Uh, but, you know, there are also, the Americans have do develop this whole idea of having specific night operation carriers and putting together their skilled people to divert to as a way to get round growing the force and yeah that's what they do it's a good policy to do to do Smutsky, you need to brush up on your history of us and night ops mm, as said the usn get that they do get very good night operations but it's not at the s they get there later in the war and there are all sorts of reasons for why they've up later on in the war. And one of them is that they've had a huge fight with the various ship design bureaus to get the gear fitted onto the carriers which are needed for night operations to, to be done proficiently and properly. And there are operations done specifically. There are people who are training before then and trying to do it. But the thing is, a lot of gear needs to be fitted to a carrier to make it capable for night operations. A lot of gear. Think about what an airfield has to make it suitable for night and night landings and takes off. Well, the same goes for a carrier. Goes to ask the law. Ninety five these carriers with six or even eight inch cannons were far from unique to Oh, can I have a catapult? You know I have flight tech because yeah. yeah. There's a lot of comments from the Quiz Master Lord. No no, there are all the comments. And Williams Look, I believe you are commenting in good faith. And I realize... I have to say, because you commented the same comment so many times, you have probably got a level of sarcasm out of me. But I would also say, and I cannot say this enough, if you are an aircraft carrier worrying about onrushing destroyers in a narrow, confined space, where are your escorts? Why are you in that space? And you bring up the Baltic, etc. Okay. Denmark control, or Denmark and Norway and Sweden are the entrance to the Baltic if you're not going through Kiel. The British do not have destroyers heading towards Kiel. Not that close range. They're not going to engage in the Kiel Canal. So you can put your task group out around them, and then you've got the you've got North uh, North Sea to manoeuvre in. So that's hardly narrow. If you're going through the various straits through Denmark to get into uh, from the Baltic into North Atlantic into North Sea, well, you're either in a scenario where you already control those straits. Or in a scenario where you don't. And one of the, uh, you know, if you don't control those straits, they're probably not a good idea to go through, because I said, mines are more of a problem. Mines control for land. The la shore batteries are far more a problem than destroyers. And, again, I would add, the other problem is that, yes okay you're built to fight the destroyers that's great but the british have cruisers battle cruisers and battleships as well they can be chucking at you if you're in a narrow confined space and you're fighting destroyers well have a look at narvik that's a good example the battles on Nar the third battle of narvik the british sent war spite in if they hadn't sent war spite in there were they looked at other potential battleships to go in and even cruisers so the odds are if you're in a narrow space fighting a flotilla of destroyers there's a cruiser backing them up in which case, your 6-inch guns aren't any help. Are they engaging the cruiser or are they engaging the destroyers? And, oh, there's torpedoes in the water and I'm in a narrow space and can't manoeuvre. Where are my escorts? 
why am I here in the first place? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I realize this is a little longer than normally these comment responses are, but this one generated a lot of comments. A lot of comments. Next one will be the British response comment response, basically, for this video. Because people are asking what the likely British response would be, and I did go into it. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed.